Why, hello everyone! Welcome back! Welcome back to Playframe and Outer Wilds again at last. It has been some time. <laughs> you may recall, we played a little bit of this game last year. Uh, just kind of on a whim. A friend recommended it to me and said that it was something special. And it was! Uh, we only played a few episodes back then, but it's... It's kept on coming back to mind from time to time. It feels like a game that is something really special that I am going to want to have finished. So l let's just go ahead and do that. We're doing it now. Let's play the rest of Outer Wilds. Now, it has been some time, like I said, so uh, you can be forgiven for not remembering a lot of what happened. If that is the case, if you want to refresh, the uh, link to the playlist is down below this video. But uh, if you don't feel like watching all the videos real quick, here's the short version. The game begins just like what you saw now. We wake up on a little world called Timber Hearth, looking at the sky, and we see a small explosion out in space. Our village is a space-faring people, and today it is time for us to start our own solo space expedition. So we wander around the village a bit, talking to folks and learning a few basics like how to move in zero-g, how to use our signal scope to track down sources of noise signals around us. Uh, we learn about this stuff called ghost matter that burns to touch, uh, we learn about this weird rock substance that seems to exist in lots of places at once, and only changes when observed. And we also learn about the existence of an ancient spacefaring race that preceded us called the Nomai. Uh, our people have apparently been finding Nomai writings all over the solar system. And we just got a new translator device so we can try to translate some more of their text if we find it out there. So we go to fetch the launch codes we need, but on our way out, something weird happens. This Nomai statue suddenly turns and looks at us, and we have a really weird see-through time moment. And then we finally head off into space. Our first stop, Timber Hearth's moon, the Adel Rock. Now, the Hearthians don't use the lunar outpost for much anymore, but there is actually a little whistling friend up there for us to meet. Uh, Esker, a character who's just been stationed up there to keep an eye on things from the sky. And the fact that he is whistling is actually quite important, because music is how all of these astronauts keep track of each other's whereabouts. We try this out for ourselves on the moon's north pole. We use the signal scope to track numerous Harthians, from Esker's whistling here on the moon, to Ryback's banjo, to somebody drumming, uh, to Feldspar's harmonica. And the harmonica is interesting, because not only did Feldspar apparently go missing ages ago, so weird we're hearing the harmonica still, but we're actually detecting the harmonica in two places, a planet called Dark Bramble, and also our home Timber Hearth. So, hey, mysteries. Uh, we also check out some Nomai ruins on this moon. Apparently they were trying to build some device to locate something called the Eye of the Universe, but they decided their locator device thingy here wasn't precise enough for the job, so they chose to build another one of these things on the south pole of another planet called Brittle Hollow, so that's another mystery for us to check out. And we are just about to go check out that mystery uh, when the sun explodes and we die. And then we see through time again. Our last half hour or so of life flashes before our eyes, and then we wake up, looking at the stars as a small explosion happens in space. We seem to have gone back in time, but we do still remember what happened before, so we take our old launch codes and we set off again. And we're a little rattled by the surprising turn of events, so I think we can be forgiven for crashing into our home planet almost immediately. But once we're back to exploring, we learn of an interesting mystery back on our home planet. A strange seed from Dark Bramble has taken root in a crater here, and when we fire our scout launcher inside to get a look, we find that the scout just keeps going. It turns out that this seed plant thing has created some sort of wormhole portal thingy to Dark Bramble, which might actually explain why we've been hearing harmonica in two places, come to think of it. Next, we make our way out to the shattered planet Brittle Hollow to check out those Nomai ruins finally, and we start finding some interesting things there, like some writings, we even see what appears to be a Nomai skeleton, and then the sun blows up again. And that's about it. We have woken up on our planet once more, we have a ticking clock, and we need to solve this mystery however many cycles it takes. And I'm very excited to do that. Now that I have a better understanding of what kind of game this is, that we are solving mysteries, I do want to change my approach a little bit to how I was playing this. I was being a little whimsical and just sort of uh, <laughs> running around, just touring the universe those first few episodes. Now we're gonna have to get, like, nail down and get a little more serious. We gotta solve a mystery, so I'm gonna start being a little more thorough. I wanna take a more thorough tour around our home world first, because I think there may be some more interesting information that we now have even better context for. Also, I'm gonna try to <laughs> do my best to chase one mystery thread at a time. It's real hard because they overlap so much, and they're all so interesting, but uh, there's too many of them to chase at once. Uh, 
you will, <laughs> you won't find anything before the sun explodes. So, let's start being a little bit more thorough. Hello, Slate. There's our pilot, ready to get this beauty off the ground. Hey, what can I do you for? Hmm. <laughs> you're lucky I'm in a time loop, because otherwise I would be super dead. And you're lucky I don't have you grounded for medical reasons, but I have no idea what you're talking because I have no idea what you're talking about. Good talk, Slate. All right. I think there are going to be some other folks out here to talk to, or at least some other, like, museum exhibits and such. I feel like I remember seeing some comments saying that there are one or two more interesting uh, tidbits of information to be found uh, here on the home turf. Let's see. We did talk to you already, and we did already uh, fly the model ship pretty badly. Hey, it's you. Slate said you're blasting off in your ship today. Really excited to see the launch. Aren't you going to go into space, aren't you? You better not have changed your mind. Uh, let's see. I am still going. You better be. It's been forever since anyone launched into space. I really, really want to see it. Really bad. Hey, you want to try out my model ship? Slate says it's just like the real thing, only li less likely to start a fire. <laughs> Thank you, Micah. Not now. Already done it. Expert flyer of spaceships, and no one can prove otherwise. Hello, Porphy. Hey, oh, hatchling. I hear you're leaving us to seek adventure amongst the stars. When you return, let's you, me, and Gosson open up a bottle of the good stuff. Uh, I'm only seeking adventure amongst one star. Actually, other stars are too far away. Another metaphor ruined in the name of scientific accuracy. Sorry, I know some of these lines are repeats. I'm just making sure we're not missing anything important. Nevertheless, I do hope you enjoy your travels. Good luck. Let's see. How's it going? Hello, Rutile. They're actually blasting off in that thing, huh? They really don't explode as often anymore. <laughs> All I know is between the space program and Micah's model rockets, things seem to burn to the ground around here more than they used to. That's probably true. Okay, there may be some more stuff worth seeing here. Boy, the frame rate kind of tanks on our home planet sometimes. Uh, so we've used the satellite camera, which was neat. Uh, anything else interesting in here? Let's see here. Uh, this pilot seat used by pioneering astronaut Feldspar is all that remains of our inaugural flight into space. Although it's been argued such a distinction requires a breathtakingly liberal definition of flight, that day will nevertheless always be remembered as a landmark achievement in Harthian history. So yes, Feldspar was definitely one of the earliest pioneers of our peoples. Okay. Nothing else in here, it looks like. Maybe that more of the actual uh, interesting exhibits are in the museum proper up in the observatory. That would make some sense, actually. So, okay. Oh, it's dark out here. Got my flashlight. Hello. Hey, Marl. So it's launch day, huh? How's gonna miss you? Speaking of launch day, I was thinking about it, and the platform those ships launch from is getting old. Isn't it about time you built a new, less flammable one? That big tree in the village would be a perfect choice. I wouldn't mind helping out the space program, just say the word. Uh, <laughs> launch pad is flammable. Well, you didn't realize that? Don't worry, it's held up for all the launches so far. It'll definitely be fine for yours, probably. Good. Glad to hear it. I feel better already. And you, yes, nice. Hello there, space cadet. I hear you're leaving the crater today. If you meet any of the other travelers up there, remind them to take proper care of their instruments, won't you? Tell me about the travelers' instruments. This could be very useful. Oh, sure. I made all their instruments, you know. Let me see. There's church drums, Rybex banjo, and Gabro's flute. And Feldspar's harmonica, of course, though. Feldspar's been missing for a, a long time. Sometimes it feels like just yesterday they were playing their harmonica around the campfire. Anyway, you hear music in space. That'll be one of the space programs of the travelers. If you feel like company, you can always pull out your signal scope and track them down. We should definitely go tracking some of them down. That will be a good thing to do. So, okay. Feldspar's harmonica, which we are now hearing in two places, probably means they're on Dark Bramble somewhere, and are, I guess, stuck there. Uh, oh shoot, who was the drummer? What was the drummer's name? There's Gabro's flute. I haven't found that one yet. Uh, Rybeck's uh, banjo. I've heard Rybeck out there. What was the name of the other one? Sorry. Trouble is, every time a Harthian leads for outer space, there's one less musician in our orchestra. So, do you need something? The instruments again. Uh, Chert. Chert's drums. Okay. Haven't met Chert or heard much about Chert yet. Right. Okay. Thank you. Cool. Now. Anyone else down here? I don't think so. 
I love how many geysers there are in this home planet, Timberhearth. It's real cool. I love this village. All right, we played with the kids, and that's how we learned to use the signal scope right. Uh, do, 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 do. I forget what you say. Spinel. Fishing rhyme, fishing rhyme. Singing helps me pass the time. You leaving the crater? Guess we'll all be a little busier without you around to lend a hand. That big water planet, Giant's Deep, that's where I'd go. I need to find Hornfells. Huh. Did you try the observatory? I've literally never seen them anywhere else. Oh, right, they're the one in the observatory. I want to hear your other line, though. Fishing song, fishing song. Jeez, I think my bait is wrong. What are you up to? Oh, hmm, missed my chance. Oh, well. That's nice. I'm planning to do a lot of that later. <laughs> okay, cool. So Giant's Deep is a big water planet, and I think that's where Ryback is right now. I think, and that's also where they found that Nomai statue. We're gonna, um, as soon as I get back to my ship, we will look through the log and, uh, recap all of the important information we have so far, because that would be helpful for us all. <laughs> this stuff, the more I thought about it after recording, this seems like it could just be their term for, like, a kind of radiation, but... Just this ghost... stuff. Hi, astronaut. You know the patch of ghost master matter inside this fence? Gossin said it used to be bigger when they were a hatchling, because ghost matter evaporates. Just takes a super long time to go away. This does sound like radiation, right? I hope there's still ghost matter in the village when I'm a grown-up. Ghost matter is awesome. Uh, ghost matter is dangerous. Uh, obviously, that's what makes it so awesome. Jeez, I'm not dumb enough to touch it. Ugh, you're such a grown-up. Thank you. Because if we use the camera... Yeah, there that stuff is. Very interesting. Okay. We have been in the Zero-G cave and gotten in our practice. And chatted with Gawson. Uh, let's hit up the observatory. I can't get up there, can I? I think I can. Hang on. Let's check this out. I saw smoke coming from Young Bark Crater up north and figured I should go check it out. You can use the scout launcher. Please don't break it while I'm gone. Tech tight. Okay. I don't think I have my suit equipped, so I can... Oh, no, wait. There's one right here. Perfect. Use the scout launcher. Uh, north Young Bark Crater. And Northwest Geyser Mountains. Kind of want to check them out more eventually later, too, but... uh. South, the Quantum Grove Crater. Don't think I've messed with that yet. And east, the Nomai Ruins. Also another thing. There's a lot on the home planet to check out. There's a big place. Uh, but we will chase threads and not just random <laughs> stuff that seems neat. So. Uh, launch Scout. And Snapshots. This is so cool. It's the geysers. And it landed. Or hit something. One of the two. Let's, uh, yeah, let's just get a look at all the, uh... Get a look at all of the directions. Yeah, that's where the Bramble Seed is. What with the portal and such. Alright. And this away. No my ruins. Where are you at? Come on. Come on. There you are. And it crashes. <laughs> and finally... It's a neat little game in so many ways. I've not investigated this yet either. I probably should. <laughs> we hit a tree. Okay, enough of that. Uh, for now. Let me out. How do I, um... Oh, do I have to retrieve the scout first? I see. Okay. Cool. Neat. Alright. Glad I came up here. Is there anything else this way? Doesn't seem like it. I love the music in this game. I already, like, picked up the soundtrack, and... Mmm. It's good stuff. Hey, come say hi to your old flight coach before your launch. I got zero-G training set up if you want a refresher. 
I'm sure I'll do great. <laughs> it has been a few months, at least, since I played this last. Not quite a year. It's been a little while, though. My astronaut skills will definitely be a little bit rusty. But okay, there's definitely going to be something worth checking out in here. And hey, got a couple folks in here. Hey, it's my favorite astronaut. Launch day at last, huh, buddy? It's the translator tools inaugural flight, too. I'm so excited. It's making me nauseous. Just think you'll be able to translate any Nomai text you want anywhere you are. The two of us put a lot of hours into inventing that tool, so don't break it, okay? <laughs> oh, geez, do not break it. Uh, ugh, ignore me. Okay, I'm just nervous. I'm not even the one going into space. How are you feeling? I'm both. Excited, though. Good. You've only been waiting for the stay since we were hatchlings. Can't wait to see all your training pay off. So what's the dirt? You here to see the new Nomai statue? Uh, yeah, tell me more about this statue again. You haven't heard? Gabro brought it back with them from Giant's Deep, and Hornfell's just finished prepping it for display. Is it right here? Neat, huh? Makes me wish we could see what a real live Nomai looks like, but I guess this is as close as we'll ever get. Check it out. Looks like they had fur. Fur is weird. It's the first fully intact statue ever found, you know, and for how old it is, it's in great shape. Ah, oh, jeez, I got a little carried away there. Go on, you have a ship to launch. Take care of yourself out there, you hear? Yes. So Hornfells. Hey, look at this. The statue opened its eyes. Bet you wish you'd seen that happen, huh? <laughs> Me too. I'm not even a little closer to understanding what's going on with this statue. Was there something you needed? Were there other travelers? Well, let's see. Chert is on the Hourglass Twins. Ryback is on the Brittle Hollow. Gabro's in Giant's Deep. And there's Feldspar, obviously, but of course we don't know where they are, or if they're even still alive. Feldspar's been lost for a very long time, I'm afraid. Uh, was there something you needed? Tell me more of Feldspar. Feldspar is one of the four founding members of Outer Wilds, along with our flight coach Gossen, Slate the Engineer, and me. As ground control, and later the museum museum curator, I didn't work with Feldspar as closely as Slate and Gossen did. I can tell you, Feldspar was absolutely fearless, though. Nothing scared them. Test piloted everything Slate ever built. It's a wonder Feldspar lived to see space, frankly, but they did. Flew all sorts of dangerous stunts and explored everything they could find. And then one day, they just didn't come back. We don't know what happened, or where Feldspar went, or even whether they're still alive. It's been a long time since they left. Well, no thank you, I am good. Take care. Alright, so that's more good, useful information. Need to be keeping better track of who all these other astronauts are out there, because we're probably going to be bumping into them. Watch closely, these balls move on their own. The ground is perfectly level, so what do you think causes this spooky motion? The answer is the moon. As it orbits our planet, the Adelrock's gravity pulls on objects from different directions. In fact, it's pulling on you right now. Neat. Don't think I read that one last time, so that's neat and good and cool. Okay. So, I, again, I know that this episode is very review-dense, but it has been a while. <laughs> Uh, this piece of Nomai writing was an essential to deciphering their unique language, although the text is linear, Nomai text often branches off from a central point. Interestingly, each branch tends to be written by a different author, which I love as a detail. It's very cool. Uh, we're nearly ready. Felix and I have finished construction, and she says calibrating the device won't take long. Fortunately, the Adel Rock's lack of atmosphere will make calibration simple. After all this time, I'm thrilled to finally resume our search. It's very, very neat. Okay. Let's look at the other displays here. There may be some other good stuff. Aside from the dwellings and structures they built, the Nomai also made art. This decorated pottery was discovered on Brittle Hollow. Okay, so they were... Well, we knew they were there. And one of them probably died there. Some ancient Nomai art depicts strange animals, foreign celestial objects, and other subjects that can't be found in our solar system, which makes us wonder whether the Nomai originated elsewhere in the universe or simply had vibrant imaginations. Were the Nomai born in our solar system, or were they born among other stars and planets? And if they were, how and why did they come here? These are just some of the questions we hope to answer through further xeno-archaeological expeditions. Okay. This is Nomai Boneses, I think. What you see here are parts of the Nomai skeleton. We can tell from their skulls that they possessed antlers and, quite unusually, only three eyes. The Nomai body was most likely adapted for living exclusively on land. The differences in the Nomai's anatomy, such as their shockingly fragile bone structure, show us that Harthians couldn't have de descended from Nomaian ancestors. It's not clear where the Nomai originated from or why they disappeared. We hope to find more clues to this puzzle as we explore our solar system. I'm on it. Don't worry. 
The Nomai technology brought back from space by our astronauts has been a great boon to Outer Wilds ventures, allowing us to modify expedition gear in exciting and useful ways. For example, the little scout now boasts a warp retrieval capability that allows astronauts to recall their scouts almost instantly. This has dramatically reduced the number of scouts lost to the depths of space. That makes sense. <laughs> so that's what they look like. Cool. Um. Hmm. This crystal was taken from a Nomai ruin on Brittle Hollow. It seems to create a local gravity distortion and was most likely used to traverse steep surfaces. Try it out. That's... <gasps> interesting. Okay, that's important. Now, how... What's the range on this baby? Okay. <laughs> cool, though. All right. And also, very disorienting. Help. Okay. <laughs> Oh, that's cool. All right. That's useful knowledge. Right. Uh, yes. Okay. Cool. Yeah. All right. All right. All right. All right. Ooh, is this a rundown of the different planets we got here? Stars like our sun generate light and heat by fusing hydrogen into helium. As it grows older, the star runs out of hydrogen and starts to contract. Yes. As the star's core contracts, it gets hotter, causing the outer layers to expand. The star has become a red giant. When this core is hot enough, it starts to fuse helium into carbon. Yes. If a star is massive enough, it will continue to fuse carbon into even heavier elements like iron. Ultimately, the star will collapse under its own gravity and then explode in a violent event called a supernova. Based on Chert's observations, this will one day be the fate of our own sun. Yup. <laughs> Sooner rather than later. This angler fish specimen was found attached to the landing gear of one of our ships that flew close to Dark Bramble. It appears well suited to living in dark places with minimal atmosphere. That's probably going to be an actual threat to our safety if we try to get out of our ship out there. Maybe even just to our ship in general. Who knows? Is there anything else interesting up here? Let me double check. We're almost done with our timber hearth home turf double check here. Hornfell's observations. This is incredible. At first I thought the points of light in this image were stars, but they're not. They're galaxies. And this image covers just a tiny patch of the whole sky, which means the universe contains at least a thousand times more galaxies than we previously imagined. I, I think I need to sit down. Hmm, this is odd. According to my redshift calculations, every single galaxy in this image is moving away from us. In fact, the further away a galaxy is, the faster it appears to be moving away. It's almost as if the entire universe is expanding. But if that's true, was everything closer together in the past? And how far back can we extrapolate? Did the universe have a beginning? Oh, this is great. Ah, uh, so glad we're back to this game. Can't believe it took me so long. Let's view uh, the map. Woo! Sun's looking a little red. We don't, we're not going to get a lot done <laughs> this cycle, I don't think. Um... All right. So let's just kind of take stock of everything. Timber Hearth has a lot of stuff to explore in sort of just in every direction. And we're probably going to be coming back here and checking a lot of things out as different threads bring us back here. There's Giant's Deep, a big water planet where the Nomai statue was found. Haven't gone there yet. Dark Bramble, which we apparently have a little wormhole portal to, which is probably where Feldspar currently is because the harmonica is still playing. And it seems like a real dangerous spot. We'll eventually go there, I'm sure. Hourglass Twins, I know... Pretty much nothing about yet. Although I... I can't remember where I saw the explosion. It might have been around Giant Step. Or Giant Steep, sorry. Still don't really know about that space explosion in the sky, nor where that blue little comet thing went. I don't know if that was the interloper, that little... There was that comet a second ago. Did it just go in the sun? I can't tell. Uh, and Brittle Hollow, which we do need to go back to to, like, uh, see the rest of the Nomai ruins and stuff out there. Yeah, I haven't decided what... Uh, thread we're going to pursue first, and there is something out here. Oop. I think that music is the cue. We're almost out of time. We better finish reading fast. <laughs> it's okay. It's not like we're going anywhere. Alright, so this. Let's review on this, because this also seems like it's going to be real important later. 
The strange rock moving around in this grotto appears to react to conscious observation. The level-headed monk has realized this must be some sort of optical illusion at play, but Gabbro claims the rock exists in all possible states until it's observed, whatever that means. Whatever's actually happening, both sides of this debate do agree the effect is extremely creepy. Can we see this on right now? Nope. It's on the other side. Interesting. So I wonder if it always is. I guess it must be. So if you didn't leave the planet in time, your first time playing through, you may just suddenly explode and have no idea why. <laughs> Well, let's see if we can get a good angle on this. I'm real curious. There's the noise. Boom. Oh yeah, it's on the other side. And... Man, oh man. Well, see you on next cycle. Darn, this game is cool. can't tell quite what's happening out there. But that's definitely Giant's Deep. Hmm. Alright. So before we wrap up today, let's just complete the review <laughs> and uh, go to our ship log, read through all the data we have, all the important information, and uh, figure out a plan. And let's just go ahead and keep this on. <laughs> okay, so, ship log. Quantum moon? I'm sorry. Of what now? The north pole of Brittle Hollow is covered in snow and ice. There's a uniquely shaped Nomai ruin on the surface. There's more to explore here. Good to know. I mean, we kind of knew that, but... The Nomai on Brittle Hollow observed a phantom moon that would sometimes appear in the sky. Oh, like the little rock thing. Like the quantum rock. <laughs> cool. I'd forgotten we'd found this little piece of information. Okay. Um, you know, I was going to actually look at this in map mode, but... Uh, Interloper, Dark Bramble, Giant's Deep, Brittle Hollow, and the Hollow's Lantern, its moon, which is just spitting rocks all the time. The quantum moon, which we know nothing about. Timber hearth. What do little green star marks mean? That there's... Hmm, I don't know. The Ember Twin and the Ash Twin. Awesome. Okay, let, yeah, let's look at this in rumor mode, though, because that's going to help us figure out what it is we're going to try to do next. So, okay. A lookout platform with a spectacular view of the solar system. Esker uses their signal scope here to keep tabs on the other travelers. Is that, um... Hang on. Can you zoom in? Ah, the lunar lookout on the moon. Nice. Okay, yes. Uh, Esker has a camp on the moon also. Esker is growing a crop of trees at their camp. They seem to be doing okay, but they've probably been on, alone on the moon for too long. They did seem lonely. Uh, yeah, so what's this? Pro I guess it means that there's more stuff to chase, more information to pursue. Uh, or no, there's just new information we've not read yet. Okay. A seed from Dark Bramble crashed here and has already taken root. Tektite wants to use a scout launcher to get a look at, at what's inside. I launched my little scout into the seed. Somehow the seed is much bigger on the inside. When I launch my scout into the seed that crashed on Timber Hearth, it ends up somewhere in Dark Bramble. So that's one thread going to Dark Bramble to see what's up uh, and discover the mystery or uncover the mystery of what's going on with this little wormhole between the two is... Uh, is uh, one potential thing we could do next. Uh, let's see. The village, the one and only Harthian village, as well as the main source of explosions on this planet. The Nomai statue in the observatory opened its eyes and looked at me. I saw strange glowing lights and my own memories flash before my eyes. Hal says the statues never opened its eyes before, despite Hornfell's best efforts. 
Also, there's a zero G cave here, which is very cool. A cave at the very center of Timber Hearth used by Outer Wilds Ventures to train new astronauts. I successfully repaired another satellite, quote unquote, for Gossen. Gabro. Hal says Gabro went back to Giants Deep to try to learn more about the Nomai statue in the observatory. I'm very curious about that thread as well. We've not started chasing it yet, and since we've already got a couple others in progress here, maybe we should do those first. In fact, we may focus on this thread here. A Nomai device created to pinpoint the sources of distant signals. This uh, eye signal locator was on the moon, y'all may remember. Uh, the Nomai were disappointed by their fail failure to detect a signal from something called the Eye of the Universe here. And uh, th thus they decided that they needed to build another one uh, on the southern pole of Brittle Hollow, which is, I guess, what that is. Um, okay, you just view individual rumors too? That's neat. Hang on. The Nomai text in the... Yeah, oh, that's great. Sorry, I should have been reading all these, I guess. Esker's camp, right, seem to be doing okay on the moon too long. Esker says the Adel Rocks North Pole's marked in red on my mini-map, a great spot to listen to other travelers' music with a signal scope. Okay. Uh, from the Lunar Lookout, Esker's signal scope log reports a harmonica music coming from somewhere on Timber Hearth. They claim it sounds just like Feldspar's harmonica, but Feldspar disappeared in space ages ago. Uh, when I launch my scout into the seed that crashed on Timber Hearth, that ends up somewhere in Dark Bramble. Right. Okay. Okay. Uh, Gabro. Hal says Gabra went right. Okay. Uh, now, how do we get to Ryback from this? Ryback headed to Brittle Hollow to investigate something the Nomai were doing at the South Pole. So, okay, Ryback was going to investigate the same thing that I've been going to investigate out there. Uh, Ryback landed their ship near the big dome at the South Pole. The door leading inside was broken, so they decided to head north to the ruins on the equator to, in search of a way beneath the surface. Right. I remember that now. Okay. And the North Pole was where we were just starting to find some new discoveries when the sun blew up again. So, the Nomai decided to build a larger, more sophisticated eye signal locator on Brittle Hollow's south pole. There's a door to the observatory on the surface, but it is broken, which is why Ryback went north. Okay, I think that feels like the thread that we've, like, these are the two threads we've explored in the most detail right now. I say we pursue this one next. So, when we come back tomorrow, we are headed back out to Brittle Hollow, we're going to try to find Ryback. We're going to try to figure out how to get underground and get into this darn observatory thing. Sound good? It sounds good to me. When I see y'all next time, we're going there. Oh, more to explore on the Northern Glacier in particular. I appreciate that. And I can go ahead and mark it on the HUD. Oh, how nice. It's convenient. Uh, is there more information in this? Uh, no, it's the same info. Okay, cool. Y'all... I'm so glad to be back at this, and I'm very excited. Have yourselves a very good day, and uh, when we come back tomorrow, we're going to space. We're gonna solve some space mysteries together. <laughs> Take care, and goodbye. <laughs>